the, the reason that I got into the Philip Schofield thing was not because I care really about, I've never watched this morning, I have no idea what it's about. I don't suppose anybody who actually worked for a living ever watches it. Uh, but the, the point that really triggered me to use the current jargon was Philip Schofield deploying the suicide of Caroline Flack as part of his attempt at gaining absolution for his own conduct. He says, quite rightly, he, was a, he made some choices. And, you know, it's not that big a deal. Lots of people have been through that and have done, made bad choices and so on. We mm. don't condemn them for that. But what is wrong here is that he deploys this terrible young woman's tragedy. She died after a prolonged period of mental illness. She was terrified that she would lose her career if her mental if her medical history were was revealed yeah he had a difficult uh, you know professional dilemma but one that michael cashman who was on eastenders mm. basically broke through 30 years ago and and i i just think there's something morally unacceptable about trying to put yourself in the same category as uh karen flack in order to try to gain public sympathy. I, I, I just really found that unacceptable. Well, it's interesting because you're talking, I mean, we're going to talk about Philip Schofield in a second, but Kathleen, um, uh, 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 Trevor's started by talking about people who kind of dodge blame, who frame themselves as victim uh, as victims because this is, you know, something that, uh, that has something that people do more of these days, whereas, you know, perhaps 20 years ago when a, a minister was was found to be to be doing something, having an affair or whatever, there would be an owning up to it and that there would be repercussions and that would be the end of it. Whereas now there is more of a propensity to paint a narrative around yourself that in some way you are not completely responsible for your actions. Yes, I've noticed that um, in all sorts of places, including the university sector, when I worked there, I'd be up. At, I'd meet relative, really senior people in university who would say, "You know, my hands are tied. What can you do? It's oh. it's the way it is here." And I'd think, "Well, if you can't do anything about it, then uh, who can?" So, um, yes, I think that we're all uh, we've got. There's a language now, isn't there? A public language available of dissol dissolving yourself of blame um, by citing a mental health condition, for instance. Um, and uh, that, as I say, that has terrible consequences for people who really yeah. suffer. Yeah. And it also is going to produce a backlash against the whole language, which will also be indiscriminately applied to the sufferers. You know, so there'll be a backlash against them if people like Philip Schofield continue to cynically uh, co-op uh, co this this language. So I think we should think about it. Um, you... Sorry to bang on about it, but Kathleen is too modest to say say this. Her own vice chancellor at Sussex suddenly turned up when it was too late, turned, suddenly turned up publicly when it was too late to save her her tenure, her career there, uh, and suddenly decided, oh gosh, this is terrible. Years and years had gone on when she'd been persecuted and everybody was going, oh, nothing to do with us. We can't do anything about it, even though we're in charge of Sussex University. <laughs> That's, and uh, Catherine is absolutely right. The problem here is not the kids. The problem is the people who are supposed to be the grown-ups who simply and constantly walk away. And this is true in newspapers, it's true in television, it is increasingly true in some parts of government and the civil service. That's the problem. But the kids are going to become grown-ups uh, and do the same thing because if we have a culture no, where... No, they won't, speak. No, they won't because what they're being trained is... Because the difference between grown up being a kid and a grown-up is that grown-ups have to take responsibility. What they're being told is, actually... There are always strategies. Sorry, I'm agreeing. That that's what I'm saying. Somebody else, yeah, like saying that somebody gonna, else takes this responsibility. Yeah, we're going to end up with the whole society like this because the kids, when they're older, will will, will be trained in exactly that way. And it's this pathologization. If everything is always an illness, if everything is always a condition and there is no agency, then you've always got an excuse for everything. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's going to be a colossal problem in all sorts of ways, as you say. Uh, Kathleen, we had a, a, a media analyst on talking about Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby's starts her this morning um, uh, later on today without him. And she said, oh, he'll never work again. Never work again, Philip Schofield. I just don't fundamentally believe that. I know he said that. But yeah. I, I feel that I can see him on I'm a Celebrity in a year's time. You know, I, 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 I don't think we live in a culture where whatever he's done, 
people can still make a return, can't they? That's the thing about cancel culture. Often people yeah. who say they're cancelled tend to get uncancelled relatively quickly. Do you think it's over for him or can you can you see a world in which he comes back? Well, I think it, his his former persona is over, but that doesn't mean he can't have a new one. You know, it depends how much how much of a pain sponge he's willing to be to quote succession. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. he now become a, 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 ridic- a ridiculous figure on celebrity. I'm a celebrity and perhaps, you know, through sinking so low, then go on some new... A narrative arc where he he gets some somewhere else but i don't see how i mean for me part of the the media obsession with this is because phil and holly have just insofar as i've seen them pathologically bland pathologically nice <laughs> um, everything dark is just pushed away and it's this sunshine studio and suddenly the mask slips and you see all this humanity <laughs> and mess behind it people cannot stop looking at that um and i understand why yeah, but I don't see why it can come back as some other, some other thing. And if you like that, you can listen to us. We're sticking asthma. Have you forgotten? Well done. Every Monday to Thursday on Times Radio Breakfast. <laughs>